Oh, look, he's back. Oh, Paul's yeah. back. Sorry, yeah. sorry, sorry, sorry. No, no, no. It's good. It's good. You got to <laughs> maintain it. Oh, man, here. you're a busy man. It's okay. Take care no, of it. No, I'm sorry about that. Sorry. Uh, was it pizza delivery? Room it's service? It's <laughs> <laughs> my cocaine. <laughs> you got to stay up late. When a Coke man comes knocking, you can't, you can't <laughs> not answer the door. So, um, so back to uh, Avatar real quick. I, just a quick question. You had yeah. talked about how you were able to get um, get on the Mandalorian through uh, through Deborah because yeah. you, you, you had a connection there. Um, I know when we were talking before this, you said that you had been mentioned in fan casting uh, for uh, Airbender for yeah. a, a year or two, at least leading up to any sort of announcement or anything like that. That's what. Cool. What was, was that, was it the actual fan push that, that got your foot in the door or was it another, uh, connection of somebody that, you know, or was it just your agent reaching out saying, Hey, my dude would be perfect for this role. Yeah, I, I can tell you a hundred percent. It wasn't, uh, we, we didn't reach out. Um, uh, it's, it's interesting because the fan casting started back in 20, I mean, because Avatar, they had announced for a couple of years now that they were going to be adapting the the animation into a live action show, and uh, yeah, that's right. There's a connection with Dave Filoni. <laughs> sorry, sorry, no, I no, just had to, I had to throw that up. That was a good one from Geek Strong. Thank you, buddy. Yeah, <laughs> it's actually housekeeping. They they come in and uh, once a week, and uh, they're very persistent. So if they keep, they they just would have come in and let, if I hadn't dealt with it. So. Oh, you should have brought him on, man. No. You should have brought him on. <laughs> <laughs> that takes us to another level. Uh, it would have been too weird. Anyways, um, <laughs> so uh, what happened was, um, you know, they, they'd announced it and it, fans immediately started uh, fan casting me uh, just because I, I looked like Iroh, um, yeah. which was great. And it was just like, oh, my God, yeah, I, I do look like him. But that's kind of not how the industry works, right? Just because um, it, it's not that simple. To, to cast people sometimes, right? And um, what ended up happening is I was doing Kim's Convenience anyway, so I was completely unavailable. And uh, in terms of developing the project, from you know, from what I heard as well, there was there were delays obviously in the process. Like the original creators ended up leaving the show uh, for their reasons, um, and then the pandemic hit, which delayed everything. And so what ended up happening was, um, you know, Kim's ended. Uh, we we're going through the pandemic, and a few months ago, I got uh, I got uh, a request to audition for for a, a Netflix series, and it was called um, what was it called? It's called Blue Dawn. It was called Blue Dawn, and I was like, oh, okay. <clears throat> and the description was the sequel to Red Dawn. Yeah, I wish. Right? No, <laughs> uh, it was a basketball movie, and I was like, oh, okay. And it was just like you're you a know, baller. The, the, You're a I'm so not a baller. <laughs> <laughs> I love I love baseball, hockey, football, basketball. I'll follow it, um, especially with the Toronto Raptors. Uh, in the you know when when they won the championship, that's when I really sort of got invested in basketball for a while, like everybody else in Canada. But it, it's a sport that I'm not as into, so I couldn't tell you what an illegal defense looked like. I couldn't spot traveling. Um, you know all these different sort of rules for basketball. Uh, you know, it's just a sport that I don't follow. Not that I don't enjoy it. It's just, I'm not super into it. Um, and so I was like, oh, okay, it's interesting. And it was for the part, the guy's name was Harold. And he used to be this amazing, uh, this, uh, an amazing player and a fantastic coach. And he was like this really famous, uh, uh, collegiate, uh, coach of basketball teams. And, uh, he ended up retiring and he comes out of retirement to mentor his 16 year old nephew, who is a basketball prodigy. And I was like, oh, okay. And I'm, I'm reading the script. And for whatever reason, the lines were super easy to memorize. Like they were just like, oh, okay. And I got a sense of the character, put myself on tape, submitted it, and then promptly forgot about it. And then about a month later, my agent texts me and she's like, okay, so, you know, Blue Dawn, uh, they want a director producer session on Zoom. I've never auditioned over Zoom before. Um, it's always been in person. Uh, so it was weird. And I was like, oh, okay. And I was like, what the hell is Blue Dawn? Like, I completely forgot <laughs> what it was. Because yeah. it's like, if you don't hear from it, if you don't book it, then you forget about it, right? Like, that's a coping mechanism I think all actors should should take is, 
you flush it. Once it's done, it's done. Because mm -hmm. if you if you ruminate, if you if you obsess over it, um, and you don't get it, it's brutal, right? Like it's just after a while, it, that takes an effect on you. So I'd promptly forgotten all about it. Uh, and then I had to look it up. It's like, oh, the basketball movie. It's like, oh, it's like, oh, that's cool. Good. I, I thought I did a good job on that one. And, um, you know, so, you know, uh, casting, they resent me the, the script again. There was a little note saying, you know, just, you know, by the way, um, the character's name in the, in the sides that you got, and his name is Harold, but his real name is Ira. And I was like, Oh, Whoa! No oh, shit! Way. Are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, "Oh no!" And then all of a sudden, I started getting nervous because it was just like it became something. And then it was like, "Of course, it makes sense, right?" Perfect. You're a mentor. Ex, yeah, to a great player. Yeah, ex basketball coach, ex general. But it was written. The sides were perfectly written because it was just like. It, it was him mentoring his his younger nephew to just sort of relax a little bit, right? To enjoy these things and and like you know if you're going like and he introduces him to these uh, to this really tough sort of like in, in the sides I think it was like called um, it was called the cage and it's like where all the best basketball players in the world practice, but it's like street ball and so no, there's no refs, there's no oh. calls, this or that. Every, and I'm like, oh okay, so. It, it just suddenly made sense. It was like, okay. And they, they to totally, and they'll do this. They will rewrite scenes or they'll give you fake scenes to audition for that are in the same vein of the character. It might not be the specific subject matter, but they're looking for character. Can you play this character correctly? And whoever wrote those sides too, man, they deserve a medal because those were just spot on. Doesn't, it make, so you want, doesn't it make you want to go back and make movies out of the fake scripts? For other oh movies, my God. yeah. <laughs> I mean, think about that. <laughs> it's like that Blue Dawn needs to be made. All right, it needs <laughs> yeah. to be made. That's funny. And, uh, you I know, love it. I think absolutely. It, and so it's <laughs> it's a really cool thing. So then I got really nervous because it was like I know what this is for. Oh my God! And then immediately I thought they haven't cast this part yet. Like what the hell? Um, Dude. So I went and I I did this I did the Zoom audition the callback and then. I immediately they, they had me do a, a chemistry read with um, Dallas Liu, who they had already cast as Zuko. Uh, and it's weird, man. Like doing an audition over Zoom is weird. Uh, yeah, just because but, if you're looking at the screen, you're not looking at the camera. Well, it's kind of like how, how we have to interact with you. Like you're right here. I want to see you talk, but really I exactly. should look at the camera so it looks like I'm part of the audience's yeah. view. That's you know? exactly it. And, and so you're what a I'll professional. Do is, <laughs> yeah, I'll just throw at the camera, right? Like I'll just look at the camera and this you're, and that. I'll peek down eventually. <laughs> but it, it, it's it's weird because they want they want to see your face while you're interacting with your co-star uh, and uh, or your scene partner, and it's it's really hard to do. So what I ended up having to do is I took the camera and I put it in front of the monitor, so I, it looked like there the eye go. line was fake. Yeah. So I'm looking at Dallas, but it looks like I'm looking at uh, there's a you know there's there's give a us one line, it. give us one line because you memorize them real easy. Come on, give us one line from Blue Dawn, <clears> ladies <throat> and gentlemen, exclusive Blue Dawn. Line. <laughs> <laughs> Take one. No, I don't. I man, I don't do this to me. Don't do this to me. <laughs> you don't have to do a blue dawn line. We know it's already gonna be a blockbuster. No. Okay. All right. All well, right, I think we've along. got we've got a live question. John. Oh, oh, we do have a live question. All right. Let's, Would you like to introduce? Let's bring uh, our live question in. This is my lovely daughter, Liv. Liv, there's the camera. Hey. Say hi, to Paul. Okay, I just have a few questions, and they're 100% about Avatar and not about Star Wars. So. <laughs> Okie dokie. Um, All right. So my first question was, um, is it nerve-wracking that you're going to be stepping into the role of the most beloved character in all of the Avatar fandom? Is that Does that make you a little nervous at all? <laughs> wasn't no before, but I guess it is now. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I'm a, I'm a fan of the show. Uh, having watched the series myself, and um, you know, the, I, I tweeted about it too. There's a big shoes to fill with Mako and um, Greg, who who also who took over the voice mm -hmm. afterwards. Who was so kind to reach out to me on Twitter uh, and, and offer his support as well. It's really, uh, yeah. I, I mean, I, I take it seriously um, as a fan. Uh, I want to do justice to the character. Obviously, uh, I want to do it right for the fans. At the same time, I just don't want to mimic or do a, a, a copy of Mako's performance or, or even the animated performance. This is a, there's a reason why you do a live action show. 
and then right. just to punch it up and and tell. Um, there, there is there. They are honoring the source material absolutely. Um, I think fans will be very, very pleased with uh, what we're doing with the show. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to share it with people. But it is a, it's a huge responsibility, not only myself, but I think everybody involved, from the writers to producers, um, everybody wants to do it right and do justice to the entire series. So, right. Yeah, but well, the, the, that being said, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm a little bit nervous. <laughs> okay that's that was my biggest thing i was like i would be terrified because iroh is the most loved character in that entire show yeah yeah um and and the Are thing you, is you you rely on uh, as a performer you know I, i'll bring my what i can to it but you know the background the the backbone of any sort of story is a script and um, it is such a collaborative process, right? So it is bringing to life all these different factors from story to the interaction with the other characters, the other performers as well, working with the director. Um, and it is, you're, you're, you're creating that, you're storytellers in that regard. And everybody wants to do, do really well for it and stuff. And all I can do is my best. And that's what I'm bringing to it. And if you've seen my work and you, if you know my reputation in the industry as well, in terms of my work ethic, in terms of what I bring uh, to to this profession, because it's a craft and I'm very, very, I take it seriously and I'm very proud of the work that I do. And I always want to hold myself to the highest standards. So um, just to the fans, uh, yeah, I, I'm excited to share with you uh, what, what I can do. And uh, I, I would like to think that you will be very pleased with what you see. I'm excited. Does I'm that make you feel excited. good? Too? Yes. <laughs> I mean, no, come yes. on. I'm about to cry. <laughs> <laughs> good no, question, perfect. Liv. Perfect. <laughs> um, good question. So my other question was, what have you done pre to prepare for this role? I, I think you said that you've watched the series, but like, have you read any of the books? Is there something you've done to get into the Iroh headspace? Um. I again having rewatched I rewatched the series again. Uh I actually it's funny, my family did get me some of the books for Christmas. Really? Yeah, yeah, which is great. Uh I, I think it's important to do the homework on it, but at the same time, this is a character. I mean, that's great for background to, to sort of uh flesh that out for the unwritten or it's something that I can lean on if I have any questions in terms of something that, that isn't addressed in the script where I can fill in the blanks. But again, it is another collaborative process with all the writers and the, and the, the directors of the show because they might be doing something that isn't or, or veers off from that's different from the books or from the animated right. series. Right. And so if you're too sort of stuck in that, because we're not doing a, a, a page for page, sort of reenactment that was of, actually of my next question yeah. so perfect so and because like there's no point really if you're just gonna do that why are you doing a live action adaptation just watch the animated because it's so good yeah. right so exactly. that, that's the thing we want to take it in in different directions and everybody's very excited about doing that and and bringing avatar to a different different level um well, so how much of, how much of your own stunts are you gonna do <laughs> all of them all of them no oh i <laughs> <laughs> you, you've seen the anime, right? Like, he doesn't do that. But, I mean, season he, three. I mean, he doesn't he, have to. He he's a badass. He puts tea pretty fast and some yeah. food. There so as go. long as you can drink a lot of tea, you're good. Yeah. One of the big things I get is a lot of people, and this is so funny because it's like, we haven't finished shooting season one. There's people, because in season three, the animated, obviously, Iroh gets jacked, right? Like he's in prison. Oh, yeah. And oh, yeah. God. And so everybody, it's so funny hearing that <laughs> debate online. You know, <laughs> yeah, people are like, I don't know if he can get in shape for that. And like, really? Like, we haven't even started, and people are taking bets on whether I can get <laughs> fit enough to do that? Okay, first of all, you're going to have to get jacked in a yeah. prison. First of all, it's called CGI, okay? <laughs> I put on a green bodysuit, I'm pumped. Okay. Yeah. Second of all, these one arm pull ups. Yeah, yeah, I can do that. It's called. It's again CGI. They can fix it in post. Stunt performers, body doubles, all this stuff. Um, Third yeah, of no, all, have you seen Blue Dawn? Come on, I was a star <laughs> basketball player. Yeah. So you know, it's 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 interesting because I think the amount of chatter that's online about the show shows how devoted fans are. To this franchise and there's a rich i think there's a there's a rich uh, uh possibilities 
involved in all that because it's not only about uh, appeasing old fans, but it's about creating new fans as well and introducing this world and making it more mainstream. I mean, Avatar was pretty mainstream back when it when it uh, premiered as as a cartoon on Nickelodeon way back in the day. But I mean, this is you're talking like in the same vein that comic books were, you know, there, there was a certain fan base for that, but how much has exploded now to a worldwide sort of phenomenon uh, with the Marvel movies, uh, you know, with, with Avatar, there's that possibility as well of like reaching a much broader fan base as well. And I think as a fan of the original production, you should be like, people should be enjoying that because it's like, oh my God, so many more people are going to be loving the same stuff that I love. And I can't wait to share some of the deep cuts that I know that'll blow people's minds, new fans. I mean, that's the fun, I think, you know, for OG fans is sort of like being that gateway to some of the older stuff and say, yeah, but have you heard this right. story? Like the Siege of mm. Boston say, like, did you know? Mm -hmm. And then like sort of telling those backstories and having people go, oh my God, that's such a deep cut. Tell me more. <laughs> that's the joy. When you start finding stuff out about like, you know, uh, that storytelling and sharing it, it's, it's just, it's incredible. Um, and yeah. so, yeah, I, I think fans... I can't wait again. It's just like, there's a big, there are these themes that recur in my life, my professional life. And a lot of it is prove it. Show me, show me from day one. When I started always having to prove myself, always having to show that I belong, that I was capable, that I had craft and from grinding it out in school, becoming a, a you know, a young actor grinding out for, for little parts here or there to keep working in the business to to getting onto Kim's, uh, grinding that out, and then being on Star Wars and now Avatar. I mean, this is this is a long journey in my career. And it's always been prove it, prove yourself. And I think this is well within the same themes that I, I've been living with professionally my entire career. Is it's a, a prove it. And I welcome that challenge because it keeps you honest, uh, it keeps you hungry. And um I'm a big fan of winning people over and showing that, you know, this can be and it's going to be something that is incredibly crafted, but incredibly fun. And as a fan, uh, some really great new voices and new experiences for them. And that's exciting as a fan when you get fresh material. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I that's, that's something you want. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. For my <laughs> final thing, I just wanted to show you this and ask if you're going to start doing your hair like this. <laughs> <laughs> How do you make it focus? I have no back, give it to me. I see it. Here. I see I it. I want the bun. Ooh, my, wife got, yeah, my wife got me uh, that, that pop fig. Um, really? Yeah. Uh, when, it, after I got cast, right. which is great. <laughs> um, yeah. I'll, you know, I, I can't. All I can say is... Um, it's going to be great to finally be able to share some of the looks on this show for all the characters. I think the fans are going to be more than happy. Our costume designer, the production designer, did you hear that? Knocked it out of the ballpark. They really, really did. I got, I got chills, shivers seeing them, and my jaw dropped. And so you're just going to have to wait. But when you see it, I mean, I, I keep praying for a, a leak somewhere where they could just show a tease of some right of here's costumes. a great spot paul right here's a great <laughs> spot they'll shut us down no one will care it'll be fine just leak it um yeah. but i think it's it's really it'll go a long way towards uh alleviating some of the um the doubt that's out there just because i know uh because of you know the the, the 2012 movie the m night Shyamalan movie which made a huge mess uh sadly for the fans um, there's a lot of people who are very reluctant to sort of uh, have their hearts broken again, you know, yeah. and I get that. And I get that. And there's a lot of mistrust and a lot of like, oh, we'll see. We'll see. But if you look at what the production has done so far in terms of the, the casting for the show, the different like this is not M. Night Shyamalan's casting. We have diverse, a rich, diverse casting that is appropriate to the races that are being portrayed uh, in the series. Uh, I think that's a great step forward. You've got like the the kids that have cast; they look really close to to the actual characters that they're portraying. But not only that, they're really good actors, and that's the other thing. It's not like oh, you look exactly the same. You can't act, but it's like you know you step in because you look the same. It, it's none of that. Like these are crafted actors who are exciting to watch, 
and see uh, get the opportunity to to inhabit these characters and bring them to life and, and do what they want to do. So I, I love that. I love that. And so you have to realize that if it's starting from that point, they're going to make sure that things are done right. And the closest comparison I can make to it so far is like Mandalorian. Right, you look at the level of detail, the care that they take for casting, for writing, uh, for production, for props, the costumes, to everything. These are fans of the Star Wars universe, so the people who are doing Avatar, they're fans of that universe as well. Uh, so, well, they're also raising the bar for everybody else that's going to try and do something from a beloved franchise. You know, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ghostbusters Afterlife. I thought was really, really good at incorporating the old and the new. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked about before we were on Cobra Kai has done right. that very, very well. And so Avatar, another known beloved entity, uh, if you're going to take something on like that, then you better nail it. Right. Otherwise, yeah. otherwise it, it's not going to happen again. Yeah. So yeah, so that that's encouraging to hear you say that, and and, uh, and beyond and, encouraging, Paul, it's just yeah. fantastic. I really, I mean, the passion. I mean, if you're if you're just the fact that you're on the set, it just makes it feel like. I mean, this is a real deal. So I, I love that. It's very cool. And by the yeah. way, we should stop the pod now, and then we're going to start a new pod called. Live Paul and Josh, or live Paul and Dad, <laughs> and 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 Paul talks to Liv about all that work ethic. And we talk about college, okay? So, uh, uh, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> New pod, Paul. New pod. Paul. Uh, or anyway, well, uh, you know, the Godfather, whatever you want to do. Let's let's just <laughs> just take. Yeah, we we can sign the papers. We we'll just mail them right up there. <laughs> All right, Liv, here's your chance. Look at the camera. Paul's going to look look at you, and you can wave and just be like, I was on screen <laughs> with Uncle. With Uncle Iroh. <laughs> just look. Look at the camera. <laughs> Go ahead, Paul. Give her a peace sign. Give her a peace sign. Yeah. 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 Oh, that was her whole thing. <laughs> Thank you so Thank much, you, Paul. Liv. Thank you. Those Thank were you, great Paul. questions, Liv. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Bye, Liv. Bye. Go to bed. <laughs> School night. <laughs>